everyone, Lucy Fink here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, be sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. You can join my 250,000 person YouTube family. I am so grateful that we finally hit 250K. I did not see it coming. It happened really quickly. We just hit 200K a few months ago and this channel's been cruising and it's all thanks to you. So thank you so much for being here. Give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos about content planning and content creation. And now let's just dive into how I plan, organize, and create my content. As you might know, if you are a subscriber of this channel, I used to work full-time at Refinery29. When I worked there, I was an employee of the company, I was a video producer, I was a host, and I had a lot of people around me helping me create the content that you saw on their channel. So I was doing my job of coming up with the video ideas and then actually working with videographers to shoot it and to produce it on the back end with editors. But there was also a whole team of people working with me who were writing the articles, creating back end graphics, creating all the marketing materials that we needed for the show to really blast it out. And now ever since leaving Refinery29 and starting my own channel, I've had to figure out how to do all of those things by myself. And YouTube is just one piece of my daily job. So actually a huge part of my job is run on Instagram. My handle is at Lucy B. Fink. You'll see I have over 150,000 subscribers on Instagram. That's really where my platform started growing. So even though my YouTube channel has now surpassed my Instagram, it all started on Instagram. And that's really where I put my initial efforts and energy and then led people over to YouTube. Other people who want to become full-time content creators ask me all the time how I come up with ideas for my videos, how I actually plan and organize my content calendars and my task lists. And you know, I didn't take any back end courses to figure out how to do this myself. I've just been doing it for years and years and I've fallen into somewhat of a system. So now I'm gonna share it with you and hopefully it helps you. I do have planners and some notebooks and I do like to write things down by hand just to stay organized and see things written in front of me. But I will say I'm pretty much a digital planner when it comes to keeping on track and making sure that all of my work tasks are accomplished. So today I'm gonna focus on how I do this all digitally. When it comes to my personal brand, a lot of things are happening at once. There are a lot of moving parts. I have YouTube videos, Instagram posts, a newsletter. I do brand partnerships and collaborations, capsule collections. I'm on Pinterest, TikTok, all the good things in all the good places. And I use Asana as my back-end planning tool for all of these projects. Today's video is not sponsored by Asana, although having Asana be a sponsor of mine would sort of be a dream. So if anyone from Asana is listening, hook me up. I would love to do another full video kind of walking you through everything I do on the back end of Asana, but I'm gonna keep it kind of vague for now in case people don't know what Asana is or don't use it. This video is not specifically about that tool, it's just about how I keep things organized. So in the back end of that platform, I have a whole bunch of projects. And inside each of those projects, there's either a board or a list or a calendar based on whatever makes sense. When it comes to Instagram, it makes most sense for me to view it as a calendar, and I try to be at least a couple of weeks planned out in terms of what is coming out on my Instagram. And that includes feed posts, reels, videos, IGTVs, and stories. But I do wanna call out that the way I plan this content in Asana does not let me actually see the physical content, so this isn't the same platform where I would like drag and drop photos to organize my grid. When it comes to that, there are a few different apps that I like. I really like Later, Planoly, and Unum. Not sure if I said that right, but those are really good apps when it comes to dragging and dropping photos to make sure that your grid looks pretty and that you're capturing the color scheme you want. My only issue with all of these apps is that none of them currently pull in reels or IGTVs as part of your grid, even though they do live on your grid. So it's sort of giving you a false vision of what your grid looks like, but at the end of the day, I have sort of thrown grid planning out the window years ago. So I no longer am the kind of person who sits for hours and plans out this like gorgeous gorgeous Instagram spread. I do think that's very important for people who are just starting on Instagram, but once you have a dedicated following, it's more about the value you're providing on a post by post basis and less about what your grid looks like on the whole. I even plan my Instagram stories out too. So even though I do show up live pretty much every day on my Instagram stories and I talk face to face, I also do like to pre-prep some more curated stories in Canva. Things like polls or a swipe up to my YouTube channel or a past video. I like to every day have some sort of 
professional looking Instagram story go live that drives my audience elsewhere and has a clear call to action. If you are the type of person who is sitting here thinking Instagram is my key platform and I really, 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 really want to learn how to grow on Instagram in 2021 and how to build a dedicated audience on that platform, I've got you covered. I built an entire Instagram branding course. It's called From Invisible to Unstoppable. I created it with my friend Marjolaine who lives in Germany. And the reason I wanted to work with her on this course is because the two of us have very, very different Instagram following levels. As you can see, I have over 150K. She has over 3K followers. But despite the difference in our following level, we are both using Instagram pretty much full time to run our businesses. And I think it's very important for people who are just stuck looking at metrics and trying to grow their following that it's really not all about that number when it comes to Instagram, but it's more about what value you're providing and how you're connecting and engaging with your audience. So we built an entire course about how to build a dedicated brand on Instagram. We actually just added a bonus module all about reels because Instagram reels is all the rage right now. So if anyone's watching this video and it's between November 30th and December 4th, 2020, the cart is open. If it's outside of that window, you can still get on the wait list because we are gonna open the cart again at some point in the future. But for now, get on the wait list or get the course. I'm telling you, we've had over 150 people take the course so far and people are just blown away by how comprehensive it is and how much depth and detail is in there. And I just can't wait to share it with you. We worked on it for almost an entire year and it's finally available. But if I am being honest with you, YouTube is really the platform where I've been spending most of my time and my energy. So for that reason, my YouTube project in Asana is the most robust and does have the most going on. The thing about YouTube and creating content for your own YouTube channel is that there are so many moving parts you need to be aware of. And likely any up and coming YouTuber doesn't want to invest money in the channel yet because it's not making them money. So at that point, you really have to start and know all these steps yourself. And that includes coming up with ideas for videos, writing out scripts where applicable, shooting the content yourself, organizing the footage, editing the video and producing it to put it into a nicely packaged video, doing all the SEO backend optimization, tags, description box, thumbnail, uploading the video, and then actually engaging with the community once it's live. So there's a lot that goes into even one video, let alone people that upload a video a week or sometimes two to three videos a week. So the first thing that's really important for me when it comes to YouTube, because there are so many moving parts for each video is to make sure that I am sort of planned out in advance. You might know I have a video that goes live on my channel every single Friday. And although there have been some Fridays where I've skipped that post deadline, I really try my best to upload every Friday at around the same time. Showing up consistently is key when it comes to building a brand on Instagram and getting people to come back to your channel. So I do work really hard to have those Friday videos week after week. The major way that I get ahead of the game with my YouTube content is to always have a list of videos that I'm working on to know exactly when they're going live and to make sure that at any given time, I'm about two to three weeks out in terms of having content locked and loaded and ready to go live. The worst feeling for a YouTuber is when it's Thursday and you have a video going up on Friday, but it's not finished being edited yet or God forbid, shot. I like to be weeks and weeks ahead so that I am never running against that clock and I never feel like I'm gonna miss a posting deadline. And this becomes very important when you're working with brands and you have partners and collaborators and actual paid projects on the line, you cannot afford to miss deadlines. Some of these deadlines are tied to product launches or specific discount codes that are only valid for certain windows. So you really do need to be prepared and organized and making sure your videos are going up on time. So step one when it comes to organizing a YouTube video would be the ideation phase. This is where I come up with the idea for the video. Sometimes I've had an idea that just popped into my head. Sometimes I saw another content creator that made a video and I wanted to make my own version of that. But most of the time, I'm pulling my ideas from you, YouTube commenters. So I will go through the comment section on my most recent videos. I'll see what people are requesting. Sometimes I'll do polls on my YouTube community tab and people will actually just tell me through a poll what video they wanna see and I will try to execute and make those videos. If you are a dedicated follower of my channel, you might know that I received so many comments asking me to do a dad does my voiceover video and a couple weeks ago, you saw it on my channel. I think it's incredibly important to listen to your audience and let them feel 
involved when it comes to your channel and the content you're uploading. That's just a great way to build loyalty and a community. So I'm one of those people who jots down YouTube video ideas everywhere. I have them in my notes on my phone, random notebooks in my planner. Sometimes I'll just text Michael or have him text me so I can remember. But once a week, I spend dedicated time taking all of those ideas from various places and compiling them into Asana into my list of to-do videos. So in my YouTube project, I have five boards. The first board is videos that are currently in progress. Then there are to-do videos, which are sort of like my videos that are up next or on deck. Then I have a category for future at home video ideas and future out in the world video ideas. And the difference between these would be an at home video is something I can shoot just in the comfort of my home, almost like a vlog style video. And out and about in the world videos are videos that require me to go to a local business or to hire an external shooter and shoot something on the streets. Because of the pandemic, I haven't shot many of those out in the world videos, although as soon as the pandemic is over, I'm hoping to do a lot more of those. And then the fifth board is uploaded and finished videos. So as soon as a video is done, I'll mark the task complete and drag it onto that fifth board. So as I mentioned, whenever I have a new idea for a video, I'll pop it on the appropriate board. And then when it comes to actually working on each video as a project, there are a whole handful of subtasks that I need to do for each and every video. And because I need to do these subtasks for each and every video, the easiest thing for me to do is just to create a sample project project and I just duplicate that so that every time I'm starting a new video, it already has those subtasks imported. And those subtasks include all the things I would need to do to get that video from the shooting phase to the upload phase. So first I need to actually shoot the video, which includes setting up my camera, my microphone, my lights and you know the scene to shoot the sitting down portion like this not every video has a sitting down portion but where applicable i do that then i have to shoot the b-roll so not every video has b-roll but i do try to get b-roll into every video to make them more dynamic and creative then the video needs to be edited and completely locked up and ready to go live if the video is sponsored by a brand the brand is going to need to see the video and approve the integration before it goes up then we need to pull all the proper seo so that the video can be properly optimized on the back end of YouTube. There needs to be a description box. We need to create a thumbnail. I need to actually upload the video onto YouTube and set it as private. Once it's uploaded, I go in and I do the closed captioning so that there's subtitles for people who are hard of hearing. And then I like to create a series of Instagram stories, usually two to three frames to promote the video once it's live. And then of course, it needs to be published and uploaded. Check. Each of these subtasks can be assigned to someone and given a due date. So what I like to do is, you know, go through these subtasks weeks in advance for each video and actually assign them to the member of my team that's responsible for that task and give them a due date. And here I'm pretty much just working backwards. So if a video is going live on the 30th of a month, I'll like to say, you know, make sure it's shot by the first of the month and make sure the description box is written by the eighth of the month and make sure it's actually uploaded and prepped on YouTube by say the 15th. So it's basically a lot of project management. It's a lot of looking at calendars, seeing when things are due, shifting things around, organizing things, and just keeping tabs on everything at once. For anyone who's an aspiring content creator, you don't have to be using Asana, but I would highly recommend getting a planner or using some sort of content planning tool. That is a really great way to make sure you have regular content programmed out, that you're batching it and creating the content ahead of time, making sure it goes live on a set day, making sure you have all the assets that you need around it to properly promote that piece of content. And it's just the best practice to use that content on all of your platforms to get the most usage out of it and give it the longest shelf life. There's so much more I could talk about when it comes to content planning. I've learned so much over the years. I'm actually thinking of creating another online course that is specifically targeted at YouTube. I've really been wanting to do this for a while now. I wanna create a course where I help walk you through everything from the production, you know, shooting, editing, all the equipment you need to the actual up upload, optimization, YouTube community building, all of that. So if anyone would be interested in a course, I've already come up with a working name. It's called LooTube. So comment below and let me know if you would enroll in LooTube and stay tuned for 2021 because I think it's probably gonna happen. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was helpful. I hope that sharing my content planning and organization strategy is inspiring to you. I hope you use my tips and that you can start planning out your YouTube content and your Instagram content effectively. Remember, if it's between November 30th and December 4th of 2020, you can now enroll in my Instagram Instagram branding course from invisible to unstoppable. If it's after those dates, you can always hop on the wait list for our next live launch. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time right here in New York City on my YouTube channel. Thanks for coming back and I'll see you next time.